Now, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I felt very loved lately by all of you. There's been an outpouring of love and support since I announced that Alyssa is pregnant. So, thank you. Um, and while I'm overjoyed to become a parent and really appreciate all of your love and support, I'm also nervous, scared. I like being able to put on music, go on a run, and be off the grid for a half hour. I like to be able to stroll around my garden and look for weeds, or just admire my vegetable plants as they grow. I like to stimulate my mind through reading books and listening to podcasts as I do chores around the house. I cannot wait to meet the little one that's growing inside of Alyssa. And I'm also a bit uneasy of having another demand on my time. Yeah, yeah. I think that laughter says it all, right? <laughs> I already feel like I wish I had more time, and I don't even have the kid yet. So. Time is a limited commodity. It's something that just passes away. And no matter how we wish we, that we can roll it back sometimes or recycle it or regain more time, that's just not how it works. Our world also feels to be accelerating with increasing digitization, increasing demands, and increasing distractions. We only have so much time, and we all feel the pinch of it in our own ways. For me, trying to get those last few things in before the kid is born, and I know we've all thought, man, I wish I just had more time. Maybe you're a high schooler right now, and you're balancing sports, and summer school, and a job. And even though it's summer, your days are still packed. Or maybe you're a parent trying to balance your own personal and professional responsibilities and trying to get your kid to and from practice. Maybe you're one of the folks that Pastor Lynn and I visited this week who lives at a senior facility and know that many of your, much of your life is behind you. And you're looking to savor that bit of time you have left. Maybe you're grieving the loss of a loved one. You wish you had more time together. We've been using an offering prayer in, our, in this service. It's a line that's been sticking with me the past few weeks. In this prayer we pray, through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. This prayer's reminder to me is that our time is a gift from God. And God entrusts us with time to spend. In today's gospel, we hear of two sisters spending their time in rather different ways. Mary sat at Jesus' feet and listened to him. And in contrast, Martha was distracted by her many tasks. My mom has said more times than I can count, I am more of a Martha than a Mary. I'm sure some of you feel that way, too. We live in a, work, a world, after all, that prioritizes work ethic, responsibility, and productivity. Busyness, for many of us, is a mark of success and something to be achieved. As a result from this perspective, it's easy to hear the story today as Mary sitting around and doing nothing while Martha did all of the work. 
Does that seem unfair? Does it seem like Martha's getting the raw end of the deal? What are we supposed to do with Jesus siding with Mary? The one seemingly sitting around, not helping, not working, not being productive. What does it mean for us today in our busy world that Jesus affirms Mary's decision to just sit and be present with Jesus? In today's Gospel, the contrast is between Mary, who sat at Jesus' feet and listened, and Martha, who is distracted. Mary notices that Jesus, the Son of God, the Creator of all things, is present with her. She pays attention to Him. Martha, in her busyness, misses this. Martha and Mary are a contrast between noticing God and being too distracted with our busyness to do so. In our world, we are pressured to be Martha's, to be productive and be busy, and to have full days. Jesus, however, calls us not to just put our head down and work, but instead to take time and notice God, a God who in love reaches out to us holds us, and is still very much present with us. And simply put, how we spend our time can make it easier or harder for us to notice when God is with us and God is near us. At this point, I want to invite Eli Lewandowski forward to come and chat a little bit about where he has recently noticed God. Eli, you just came back from St. Louis on the high school mission trip, so welcome. You just got back from St. Louis, Eli, and it sounds like it was a great trip. And I heard that you said you won't ever miss another one of these trips. Why is that? Um, I really liked being outside of my comfort zone for just uh, the week that we were there. Um, it was definitely a, a step outside of who I usually am, and doing God's work really, really felt felt like it was needed in the three days that we were. So that's awesome. And one of the people that you got to work with was someone named Josephine, and she really had an impact on you. And you noticed God at her house. So tell me a little bit about your time with Josephine. Um, Josephine was this lady that we worked on. Or on the first day, we came in her kitchen, um, and she's, she doesn't live in a very great uh, part of St. Louis. And I, I think her kids are, are not very, uh, are very, they're very protective of her. They don't want anything bad to happen to her. I mean, as kids should, should be. Um, and um, what she said to Troy was was really touching. After so, so she told Troy that. Um, her, her kids don't really want her to live in that area alone. Um, but then after that, she said, um, "But I'm never alone. God is with me, like always." And and that, that's that's really what what I got out of out of the mission trip the most. I think that that was the most eye-opening moment of the mission trip. Awesome. And so this was eye-opening to you, Eli, because. When you heard Josephine say, I'm not alone. God is with me. What did that show you about God? Um, that even in the, the not-so-great places of the world, he, He's always there. If, 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 I mean, if you were there, or if I was there, it, it, it doesn't matter who you are. He's always with you. He's always, he's always there. That's awesome. Yeah, so even in the those, like, most difficult of places and difficult of times, God is there. And God is in St. Louis. God's also in Muskego in Franklin as well. And that's really, that's cool. So thank you, Eli, for sharing. Um, you're going to share more later um, at our barbecue and listening session. That's going to be at 11 o'clock today. And ele- so food's going to start at 11 o'clock. And you're going to start sharing at 11.30. So I'm excited to hear more 
more about that and more from a number of others on the trip as well. So, thank you, Eli. Let's give Eli a round of applause. You all, you all should attend if you can today. So you'll have, we have hot dogs and hamburgers and other food. Um, we'll have plenty of yard games. It's going to be just right out here, just outside the, the fellowship hall and the patio. So there's going to be plenty of seating. And we'll be inside for the, the actual listening. So you don't even have to go outside if you don't want. Just pick up your food and take a seat. Um, whether you have kids in your family or your kids are grown up and left, you don't have any kids anymore. We'd really enjoy um, seeing you there later um, and hearing more about what's going on and what went on in St. Louis and just to connect with, with those in our church. And Eli, thanks again for sharing. I really appreciated hearing in your story of Josephine of how you were outside of your routine, you were outside of your comfort zone. You were able to spend your time differently and just notice things differently around you. And when you were able to do that, you were able to see God's presence more clearly. I'm also struck that sometimes it can be hard to see God on our own. And having others like Josephine around us pointing out God can help us find God in our presence. God can be found with Josephine in St. Louis, but God can also be found where we're at in our own homes, and in our own places where we find ourselves. God is still really present today. God is still reaching out to you and to all people in love. In just a few minutes, Christ will be with us as we share in communion. And Christ will be with us as we receive and share God's peace with those around us. And God will be with us as we go out and back into our lives after service today. I invite you this week to think about where else, inside, outside of church, will you notice Christ this week? Where will you see Christ healing and giving hope, sharing love, and comforting those in grief? Amidst all of our distractions and busyness, Christ can still be found. Where this week is Christ to be found? Let us go out with eyes open and ears open in search of Jesus, the God of love, the God of healing, the God of hope. Amen.